today i've been asked to tell something about the writ writ is a weapon that is given for every citizen of india in indian courts as far as the indian courts are concerned writ is something that protects your that is for protection of your fundamental rights in my experience i've seen that the the courts basically high court and supreme court when it comes to your uh, fundamental rights they they stand before uh, you with a shield to guard you or to give you what uh, what uh, has been what what has what you have been deprived of so to understand the history of writs uh, as uh, uh, we are from legal profession we'll have to admit that this is something that comes from england and and uh, it's a part of magna carta how it uh, developed and in 1773 how uh, the the people uh, felt there of this elite class that something that is uh, that has to come from the king's mouth that is king's uh, order king's command and from there it started to uh, if you uh, go to the history but then uh, uh, as uh, it came to uh, this uh, present present scenario in this scenario uh, we when our constitution was written there was this two specific provisions two articles were there we will be limited uh, limiting ourselves to uh, those uh, provisions that is uh, 226 and 32 article of constitution of india will be basically talking about that so speaking about the writs writs as i said that it is a power and in in what circumstances those powers to, uh, are to be ex- exercised that is uh, uh, very beautifully written in uh, in our constitution if you consider it as as to what are the writs so those uh, how it is divided i'll say it is divided into uh, this five parts it is divided into five parts namely uh, habeas corpus mandamus co warrant certiorari and prohibition this everybody might be knowing about this but then uh, there is uh, thin uh, lines that uh, uh, you you what you will not be getting in your books and what experience uh, gathered from the courts that only i'll be telling you in this uh, webinar i'll be uh, restricting myself to those areas only however i'll be touching the uh, theoretical part as well We're talking about the types of writs habeas corpus mandamus co warranto and certiorari and then prohibition these are the five types that we have in writs and uh, all the writs they have different different uh, meaning and different different purpose uh, to be served the the as the word goes for habeas corpus the meaning of uh, habeas corpus is to have a body to to find out a body where the body is to find out that this is a writ which uh, i say that uh, can be executed uh against an individual as well against an individual habeas corpus uh, you you take this habeas corpus and against uh, an individual nowadays i have seen this in courts that uh, the the uh, if the husband and wife if the spouses are in conflict matrimonial disputes are there this writ is used very you know very uh, commonly and very uh, frequently they are using this i do not know why they are doing this but then uh, they are using this habeas corpus i mean it's a big tool but then uh, somewhere it is uh, used like this it's a weapon which otherwise is used then comes uh, mandamus mandamus is a command it's a command from the highest authority highest judicial authority so two judicial authorities that is one is high court and one the the other one is supreme court these are the two authorities the highest authority they can command they can command anybody anybody from the state to achieve the welfare state so to maintain achieve and to to keep a watch on them this this writ comes into picture and it's a severe for us co warranto is the authority it seeks the authority certiorari is certification and the it's a watch on the lower authorities lower tribunals lower courts then prohibition is the last one speaking about uh, these uh, habeas corpus mandamus co warranto certiorari prohibition the the courts here 
basically when we are talking about uh, high courts and uh, then high courts i'll be talking about mumbai court mumbai high court bombay high court in bombay high court i have seen uh, that uh, the uh, writ petitions those are filed are to restrain the the government bodies the orders or many of them they file uh, this mandamus they uh, use nowadays and uh, uh, there is uh, if you uh, understand this uh, surface uh, the the proceedings of uh, banks initiated by banks under surface to recover the money there also you have the authorities where you can challenge the order of the recovery uh, proceedings like uh, uh, some section 14 uh, certificate has been issued uh, by the magistrate or the collector and then uh, you have uh, some attachment order some notice has been issued to challenge these notices you have the different authorities say uh, you have drt you have dr80 to challenge the order of drt but then sometimes there are uh, there is a thin line that uh, your fundamental rights have been violated or uh, something uh, some some law has encroached upon your some 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 order has been taken out to encroach upon your uh, your rights then so if there is something that uh, uh, comes from that uh, that takes its flow from some law then for that purpose you have another provision for that there is an authority and there is provision if in the act provided to challenge that uh, particular act of that authority then it's an appeal or uh, it's a revision whatever if you have then uh, uh, generally it is said that you should avoid uh, for uh, coming to the rates however in the cases where when it comes that your fundamental rights have been uh, encroached upon in those situations in those circumstances only rates are to be exercised there are uh, certain instances now uh, very recently i uh, i came across this uh, um, uh, gujarat high court judgment in that judgment the the court was uh, seeing what is 226 and how this 226 acts how this 226 helps and 226 and 227 how the difference what is the difference between 226 and 2 uh, 227 and while while talking about it it laid down the the box for 227 how it is to be and how it should be different from 226 so 226 was specifically provided that when it is a fundamental right if there is a violation of fundamental right then only it should be sought before the court now uh, there was a time that in 2021 i guess when the, this bail was granted by supreme court in the matter of arnab goswami there was a big uh, huge discussion and at that time uh, the the powers of high court and supreme court was discussed as regards to 482 that is 482 is the discretion of the courts that is the inherent power of the high court it is actually but i i consider it whenever i talk about uh, rates i i uh, keep in mind in about 482 as well because something we are talking about inherent powers or a weapon which exclusively rests with the high court and the supreme court so uh, i must talk about 482 as well here 482 also sees that uh, uh, where there is some difference is there between the uh, law and the Uh, the uh, actual effect that has been given by the executive system so there the authorities the the difference between the gap created by the authorities and the law if if something appears like that to the to the courts then the the courts come into picture they they come into action and then they uh, exercise 482 that's the inherent power of i'm, I'm trying to make it simplify so so uh i'm saying this way so uh, uh then then uh, this 226 how it is uh, related to that now going there if your fundamental rights are violated how this is going to affect your petition how you are going to file this petition and how it is going to affect your uh, uh case you have to be very cautious you have to be very cautious while drafting the petition drafting your writ uh, uh, more particularly uh, if you are seeking mandamus habeas corpus or 
sociology whatever you are seeking if you have to uh, you have you are able to demonstrate to the court that your fundamental rights are violated then only your petitions would be entertained otherwise it will not be to talk about this uh, i uh, i will refer the case of shalini sham sethi and another versus rajendra shankar patil that was uh, referred in mukesh bhai's uh, judgment that was that is what i just referred from gujarat high court this is 2010 8 ssc 329 in this uh, in this it was beautifully written that however after the constitution every high court has been conferred with the power to issue writs under 226 and these are the original proceedings so what i am saying is you are invoking the uh, inherent jurisdiction original jurisdiction of the high court under 226 and you are you have been given this authority not uh, by by not going to the other district courts or mufassil courts and directly to the high court you have this authority only in the condition when the prime motive prime guarantee that has been given to you under constitution when that is affected in that situation only this should be exercised that is what it is even the rules of this uh, writs you one can find under section 45 of specific relief act as well but that we are not going to discuss here we are going to discuss only 226 and uh, 32 likewise like this 226 we have this 32 same same powers we have there in in 32 that is uh, that rests with the supreme court supreme court has been empowered with this article 32 which gives the supreme court an authority to see see the fundamental rights to protect the fundamental rights of individual or whatever comes in different these five uh, uh, writ petitions that somebody if comes with so uh, that is about the uh, writs that i have i must while dealing with this uh, i must name the judgments few, few other judgments that was uh, brought to my notice during this uh, all time that is uh, one was united bank united bank of india's case that that uh, got my attention during this period there was this instance that i went to high court i challenged this uh, action of a bank under surface and then at that time when i i it happened that i could uh, approach this bank uh, this uh, high court there this came into my way united bank of india's this judgment this says this says that uh, there was this uh, specific case i must uh, mention this so that i'll be able to uh, elaborate what i'm trying to say uh, there was a situation that uh, uh, one builder he was uh, he was trying to uh, uh, trying to sell the property and he sold it to one of the clients one of his clients and uh, after selling he uh, uh, to this client he finds that uh, the payments have not been given to him and so he went uh, he goes to some uh, to the district court and gets the agreement cancelled the agreement which is executed in favor of the uh, the client the purchaser the purchaser though the agreement has been cancelled he uses this agreement and makes copies of it he clones this uh, agreements and then he mortgages these agreements and then takes the loan from different different banks now his agreement which was originally existing in, in his favor that is cancelled he has cloned the agreements he mortgages those cloned agreements with different different banks he took the money from there and then these banks they started recovery proceedings against this borrower so recovery proceedings against the borrower but the secured property is this builder's property which the, for which the agreement was originally executed and which has now now been cancelled in this situation as well when we went to the court stating that look my lord we have this situation and here fundamental rights of this petitioner has been violated in as much as his right to business and his fundamental rights of earning money and livelihood that has been taken away in this situation as well the court said no you should approach the drt where this situation also can be dealt in with 
This was the situation that was discussed in United Bank of India. Similar situations. So this was a situation that we faced and United Bank of India describes how this builder will be claiming his rights in the court of law. So now we have to distinguish. Therefore, now I'm, I'm saying that uh, I'm distinguishing it, that how this 226 is different from the uh, power or the, the remedy that has been given to an individual. So in this case that I just cited, in this case, case the, site, uh, the, the remedy is provided under DRT uh, in the uh, Surface Act before the DRT itself. If there is, all, all that I'm saying is if there is a remedy available, then you have to exhaust that remedy, but not come directly to the court under 226 in a rate. This is the situation. However, while saying this academically, I must say that uh, we have get uh, we, we get the instances where it is also said that if there is an alternative remedy that does not uh, bar the high court or supreme court from taking cognizance of the situation and protecting the fundamental rights of the individual, this is what has happened in Arnab Goswami's case. So now, two things I have said that if there is a provision in other statute to protect your rights, then. You cannot go, go to the High Court or Supreme Court under 226 or 32. But at the same time, when it is so sparring situation, such a situation that the fundamental rights of an individual are protected, uh, are to be protected in such situation, the, uh, the High Courts, High Courts and Supreme Court has the authority to get into, uh, come uh, uh, and protect the rights of the individuals. So that is how the rights are there. So um, can we have this uh, uh, interaction? So the participants are requesting you to um, highlight the walkthrough, like just uh, to take them to a walkthrough to the process of a writ petition, oh, of fantastic. handling a writ petition matter. If a person is uh, uh, comes into a situation where his fundamental rights are violated, for uh, instance, let's uh, uh, let's take a very genuine, very, you know, common uh, uh, this uh, question that comes around nowadays. Um, if uh, I know, I, I, I hope that everybody might be aware of this encroachments and the uh, petitions in respect of that when it is filed. May it be encroachment on the footpaths, may it be encroachment of uh, 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 government land and somebody has constructed their house. So, uh, let us uh, walk through this and then similarly we'll be taking one uh, criminal matter as well. So one person who has constructed his house in government land, let's say, and then he is there for sitting there for more than 30 years. So uh, why 30 years? That is a separate story uh, that 30 years if you occupy some government place and then they are not, it's an adverse position or if whether it fits into adverse position or not, that is a separate issue. And uh, because there is... Uh, uh, this MADA and uh, other other laws are there, wherein uh, they are accommodated, slums and all, and declared the rights incur in your favor. So now in a situation where this person, or uh, uh, say this Mr. A, he occupies a land, uh, land a, a house, a house is built in a, a slum area, and that area, uh, that, that uh, uh, hutment now has been given a notice to vacate for some reasons. So stating that it is an encroachment or it is uh, to be removed for some reasons it has come. So now this encroachment, uh, uh, removal of encroachment, this notice has come. There are separate, separate remedies available for this because that notice, uh, uh, whether there is any provision to challenge that notice or whether uh, there is uh, uh, an appellate authority or some uh, committee is constituted earlier. There was no such uh, 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 authority available. Now there are hyper committees and other committees are available. But then some situations there are there is nothing that uh, you have no appellate authority or no authorities uh, are being constituted under law uh, for this purpose. So once you file a writ petition, you challenge this this notice given to you. You challenge uh, uh, challenge this uh, notice before the High Court under two twenty six and say that direction may be issued to the authority to not demolish my uh, this structure for this 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 duration or this uh, for these reasons 
or this is the reason it is bad in law or or whatever so here what you are seeking you are seeking is protection of your fundamental right before a, a, a civil uh, in a civil uh, uh, petition before a high court and in this petition when you you uh, file a petition before the high court the judge has to see uh, the judge first sees the the bona fides of the person whether he has come with clean hands in writ it matters a lot in writs it matters really really a lot that a person who is approaching the high court whether he is a bona fide person whether he is with clean hands or not so it is like uh, uh, uh when i'm saying a bona fide person or clean hands then you should not be in direct violation of any law that is what is to be what is tested first and then then the whether you have exhausted all the remedies or not that also court, court will check court sees that if there is an a remedy provided to you and you have not exhausted that remedy then uh, also without exhausting your your remedy you have approached the court then the court will not entertain you but then if you make out a case that despite you have taken all your efforts you have approached all the authorities and then you have not been heard and in this situation only the court can only the high court can help in its writ jurisdiction then writ is to be heard if once the writ is filed then you have to notify to the authorities like uh, government leaders the particular department against whom you have sought the writ once you have notified them you have sent them the copies and intimation that the particular matter is now filed and you are moving a precipice precipice is something you are seeking the court to give you early hearing if you take an early hearing before the court uh, you intimate the other side and if this intimation is given if all the parties are present before the court you have to convince the court once you have convinced the court that this is your case and this is how your fundamental rights have been violated so the court will ask the other party then and there as to give the explanation as to why no uh, why the coercive action should not be taken against that person or or why no no coercive order is to be passed against that person so this is how uh, this uh, comes about uh, um, uh, civil civil writ petition let us talk about uh, the criminal on the uh, uh, other side there is this case uh, uh, i'll discuss with this case uh, um, about criminal uh, in it is mcoc case that is maharashtra organized crime case so in organized crime case this uh, situation uh, has come uh, before me in which uh, Uh, the uh, bail was granted to the accused from the high court the high court has enlarged the accused on bail and subsequently this uh, fir was taken into mcoc additional provisions of mcoc were applied into it and it was applied against this accused as well it was approved and the uh, uh, provisions were applied against this accused now bail has already been given but new provisions are added as regards to mcoc in this situation the authorities issued a letter a notice to the accused that look the now the provisions of mcoc have been sanctioned against you and you have to come for investigation you have to join the investigation pursuant to this you will appreciate that once the fir is registered there are certain provisions and once the bail is given you are given bail into those certain provisions only as soon as the new provisions are added new sections are added to the fir you have to seek further uh, protection in regards to those provisions that is what is to be understood by and large so now here new provisions are added mcoc provisions are added organized crime provisions which are serious provisions which are considered to be serious provisions in this situation if this person goes for attending this uh, uh, investigation for joining the investigation he may get arrested in this situation and he is now uh, just thinking as to what is to be done in this situation, 
information only taking this letter there are special courts for the for conducting these special statute uh, matters so there is this mcsoc court in this situation the authority goes to the uh, mcoc courts and gets an order arrest order see bail has already been sanctioned however he gets an order from the mcoc court to arrest this person so now there is bail anticipatory bail operating in favor of the accused and there is an order of arrest that is in the hands of the authority in this situation if he joins the investigation he will be surely arrested now if he goes for bail whether he will be granted bail or whether there is provision of bail and if there is provision of bail whether he should go for bail or not here if you understand this way that uh, since he has been granted the bail and since he has not been given an opportunity to explain as uh, his story to the authority before that only his uh, arrest uh, uh, order has been sanctioned by the special court in this situation if he goes challenging the entire proceedings of mcoc then a writ is to be filed and in that writ if he says that if he says that look this proceedings per se is illegal and in these illegal proceedings i have been directed to be arrested by the court by the mcoc court by the special court so no coercive order against me or this order of uh, arrest be stayed so in this situation if he files a writ petition in the uh, high court he goes there and after filing of the writ petition there is one more thing that i must uh, uh, tell uh, you guys that if you uh, file a writ petition there is something called as ad interim relief there is one interim relief and the other one is ad interim relief so interim would be uh, before getting the petition disposed of you can seek for uh, interim relief and that would be uh, given to you after hearing the other side if you talk about ad interim protection then this ad interim is even with, without uh hearing the other side that is the other side is the state if you uh, if if the court decides that even without hearing them the, you can be protected you can be given some relief that is ad interim relief and in some situation in a situation like this where the authority will not be given most of the times the authorities are not given opportunity but then the interim protections are given by the courts so if suppose this petition this writ petition is not filed writ petition is not filed then what are the the, the judge will test you like this if this writ petition is not filed and i am directly sending uh, directly asking him to go for uh, challenging the uh, bail order whether he can say this you will have to while while uh, drafting your petition you will have to answer all these questions that no i won't be getting an opportunity to challenge this bail or if i go to challenge this bail how my fundamental rights are affected uh, the the order of the lower court I'll, i'll for seeking bail if i'm going to challenge that and uh, seek bail then how my fundamental rights would be violated so you will have to go to the root of the problem to show that your your fundamental rights are affected and if you are able to show that you will be certainly getting a relief may it be civil writ or criminal writ so that is how uh, you go for writs and similar is before the supreme court what are the alternate legal remedies to a writ if you can highlight some remedies i'll give an example to this uh, most of the times how this alternate remedy uh, how this issue comes uh, why the people talk about alternate remedy see uh, most of the times we uh, you come across being a lawyer being a practicing lawyer you you confront to the people they say that this is blatant illegality that has been committed to me it's supp- it's supposed an fir is registered against you you say that no no nothing doing there is no uh, crux into this fir there is no material into it and it's a blatant illegality and then uh, it should be quashed it should be quashed it should not survive if you decide that and you you go to the court for quashing of this fir then the court will see from the 
the language of the FIR that is there any prima facie allegation against you? If there is a prima facie allegation, if suppose it's a uh, uh, let's let's consider it uh, as a uh, it's an abuse or uh, hurt uh, issue of uh, uh, 323. If there is a uh, there is this FIR registered for three, 323 section 323 IPC and other such provisions uh, stating that you've been uh, uh, hurt uh, you have hurt somebody uh, grievously with uh, some weapon or something. So if there is an allegation stating that you have on such and such at such and such place on such and such occasion at such and such time you have hurt him on his face his uh, nose is broken or his forehead has suffered this and he suffered three four stitches or uh, like that and then so therefore he has gone to the police station and you are sought to appear before the uh, police officer for investigation and if you go there you'll be arrested now this is the situation in this situation, if you go to the uh, High Court and uh, seek the quashing of, of this uh, FIR, and as an interim measure, you ask for protection from uh, getting arrested, that is anticipatory bail you seek uh, therein. In this situation, the court says that, see, in your FIR, there is sufficient material for prima facie investigation. Now, let me uh, tell you one more thing here. There, you say that the person, the truth is this, according to you, the truth is this, that this person, he fell down somewhere and he got stitches in his head or his nose was broken and he had to take medication. The fact is this, according to you. But, and, and you go to the court and you say that this is the fact that he has uh, suffered these injuries. This is the explanation of his injury. And I am nowhere concerned with it. And also you have an evidence that you were with your friend and you were attending a party. However, at this juncture, the court will not help you in this matter. Court will rather say that you go for bail, take a bail, go to the investigation agency, go to the uh, IO, join the investigation, and whatever documents you have of your innocence, whatever evidences you have of your uh, innocence, you submit it before him and get it uh, verified and get acquitted. There's no problem with that. Why have you sought this writ? Because there is prima facie material for investigation against you. However, at the same time, let us consider it this way, that you are not there at this spot. This person, he doesn't say that he has heard. He says that there was a dispute between you uh, both and then you hurt him and then he went to the doctor, doctor treated him and he came to the, came to his house and he is there now at his house and the next day he felt that he's aggrieved by your act and he goes to the police station and he registers an FIR and then the section of 323 has been put in there. Now, in this situation, you go to the court. There, the court says that what is the material of 323? Where is the grievous hurt? The essentials of 323, it is missing in the FIR. And then the court may, in its discretion, grant you interim protection by way of not getting arrested by the IO. And also it will issue notice to the other side. And after questioning the authorities, it may quash the FIR. So this is... Uh, how is alternative remedy that can be discussed, that can be described? Uh, so there's one question. Any tips on what relief can one sort in a petition? Any tips on that? Petition, uh, it depends upon the facts of the petition. Once, uh, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a petition for, uh, uh, say, uh, challenging the writ petition, challenging the encroachment, I mean, uh, removal of the encroachment. Approachment, what kind of petition it will depend upon it. Uh, basically, you should not uh, uh, get into the factual, if it is a writ petition, you should not get into factual aspects rather than you should get into the uh, the legal aspects of violation of fundamental rights. That is all to be, uh, that is what uh, is to be taken care. Under Article 226, writ can also be filed on violation of a legal right. So can you explain how does it work practically? What are legal rights? We'll have to take an instance of some writ then. 
uh, let's say habeas corpus is the uh, much discussed and the first writ only let's let's have that your legal rights are legal rights is fundamental rights all, all that i'm talking about there are other rights as well contractual rights and other administrative law if something it does uh, that uh, other uh, things that come into so now we are talking about the fundamental rights here so fundamental rights in as much as i'll, I'll tell you a, a very good uh, story to 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 understand this a factual not story but the uh, case that happened at punjab and haryana court Uh, with that, uh, I'll be uh, trying to understand this. There was this uh, a notorious person. He got arrested by a police officer. The police team they arrested him at some place. They did investigation, and then he was uh, detained in the uh, jail. And thereafter, thereafter, the other police team they uh, came to know that this person is being arrested here. so they sought the custody of that man and they took him while going to their police station in uh, their way they had this uh, big lake huge lake this notorious person he jumps out of the jeep he uh, jumps into this uh, lake the uh, police party they search him they do not find him and after taking 2 3 days search they they say that uh, he, he has fled away he has uh, he is not there he is not uh, he fled and then uh, he has fled and so he is not uh, traceable and then they uh, issue warrant search warrant and all uh, uh, proclamation all they are doing while they were doing this they get to know that there is one dead body that was found in that uh, lake so once that dead body they uh, find it the father of the notorious person he comes he says that this is my boy and uh, he says that the police people they have killed him and they have thrown him into this lake and uh, so he files a case while this case is uh, not registered this case is actually not registered by the uh, police officers the police station when it is not registered he goes to the uh, uh, metropolitan magistrate mm anyway, and he files uh, an application under section 190 that is uh, uh, you have this compliance of 154 and then uh, you go to uh, magistrate for registration of fir under 1563 then the magistrate may direct the registration of fir but then the magistrate does not register it but he says that no no this boy is not uh, yours and the police have rightly uh, rejected your uh, uh, application for rejected rejected your complaint but then this person he says that no no i will have to challenge it he challenges it before the session court session court says that uh, uh yes uh, there has to be some inquiry to, done into this and i depute the superintendent of police and the other uh, seniors to investigate into this they investigate the superiors they investigate and they say that no no there was uh, there is nothing into this his uh, this is not his boy it is somewhere else he has fled uh, 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 away from the uh, uh, hands of the police and then he is not in our hands this observation he again challenges to the uh, sessions judge and the sessions judge this time says that okay uh, he might have thought something and then he said okay come on now register the fir the fir is now registered so now once the fir is registered the magistrate has to i mean the direction is from his superior court so he now has to register the fir under 1263 i mean his order was there not to register that order was rejected by the uh, not to register that was rejected like like set aside and the superior court that is the sessions court uh, even after the report from the police authorities he says that now register it so now the fir is registered at the instance of the session court session court now has rejected the registration of fir fir is registered the court is now seized with the material it is now uh, in the, in the matter and now it is in the process of asking the people to come here charge sheet is to be filed and all, all all things are to be done now here the fir is registered the charge sheet is filed that there is uh, uh, no one uh, uh, no crime has been done and uh despite this uh, report sub- being submitted the magistrate says that okay i'll inquire myself he issue, issues process in this process he issues summons to the accused accused who are police officers these police officers they fail to appear so warrant is now issued while this warrant is issued they get to know that a person of the same description has been arrested into some police station and they f- they go there they see that this man is there 
Now this man is there. They get uh, the details of this person, and uh, that this person is arrested in, into so and so uh, uh, offence, and he is lodged into at so and so jail. The details they bring it and they submit it to the uh, judge and say that now please cancel this warrant and then um, uh, because this man is there, this this uh, man whose murder case is on us, he is alive. So please. Uh, exonerate us from the, here, but then uh, the uh, magistrate he says that no, no. Since the FIR has been registered at the instance of the sessions judge, and the warrant has been issued against uh, you, warrant has been issued by me. It's my own uh, order of issuing warrant against you. I have become functus officio. I will not be uh, able to set aside this warrant. You will have to get it. Uh, Cancelled from the authority, the the uh, upper court that is the sessions court. The sessions court, when they approach the sessions court, says that no, no. How can this warrant be cancelled by me? It is his right. Uh, he has issued, and it is within his power. It is. It can be cancelled by him. In this situation, now these people, they go and file a writ. Here, this is the value of writ. Here, in this writ petition, it is said. Punjab and Haryana High Court observed that this, the courts, the the courts which which are uh, they are constituted under uh, the uh, laws, they are not sitting there just to do the things mechanically, but then they have to see how the complete justice is served. So in this situation, what happens? The writ petition, writ petition, if you file. you have to show where the gap is that gap is your fundamental right now in this story i just wanted to uh, demonstrate that the legal rights are to be violation of legal rights are to be in the nature of this that something somebody is saying which is blatantly incorrect and the law has been set into motion in this situation in the in the particular situation in hand which we j- just discussed in this situation the law has been set into motion on the pretext of some wrong uh, information the genesis of the information the fir genesis of the fir is wrong but then the law has been into set into motion and the magistrate is denying from cancelling the uh, uh, the warrant and the sessions judge is uh, denying to cancel the Uh, his own order of uh, uh, the uh, uh, registration of FIR, such violations, if are there, they are violations of, of your fundamental right to live with uh, free life. And uh, Article Twenty One, I'll say, I, I won't name it, but then Article Twenty One is the uh, right that has been infringed. You'll have to clearly show this kind of violation. So there's one more question. Any landmark judgments or, or relating to writ petition that you can share with us? Surya Dev Rai's uh, judgment is the one which I understand would be very much helpful for the people. And the United Bank of India judgment. That is, these are the two judgments uh, people should follow. Uh, that is a fantastic one to understand what is writ. And then uh, this Shalini Sham Shetty's judgment that is also a very good judgment that is 2010 8 SCC 329. This was recently uh, I could lay my hands on this so uh, this is ready with me. Shalini Sham Shetty and another versus Rajesh Rajendra Shankar Patel 2010 8 SCC 329. So these are the these are two beautiful judgments wherein uh, uh, one can understand the complete scope of uh, 226. So yeah. sir. any closing remarks for the participants before we end the session there is one thing that i have understood uh, in this profession that uh, this is a profession where in you gain everything everything and uh, uh, this gives you a lot if you are faithful to yourself and you are faithful to your clients while saying this i am cautious uh, uh, i am conscious about it uh, why i am saying this because i have seen many writ petitions since this is writs so therefore i am saying in, in respect of writs only there are many people i have seen in high court they do don't do their ground work they don't do the initial work and they then they file the writ petitions and they, they consume lot of 
uh, high court's time and the time of judicial time of the courts along with the time of the uh, other uh, litigants so my only urge would be to all of you who are here they are future lawyers or they are practicing lawyers they should study well before going to the courts they should understand the subject they should discuss the subject because this is a profession where in no body would be seized with the complete knowledge but then the knowledge can be acquired through discussions through your mutual friends discuss it do thorough research this is one more part of research that researching is not only in the books or the uh, your laptops or ipads it is with the other persons as well so talk to them get to know more information the more information you have the better a better petition you would be able to draft and if a better petition has been drafted by you you will be getting better results there so one thing that have a good reading do good research then good drafting and then you can wait for or you can fight for good results and good results would be all yours